Hey everybody, Jeff Yenser, creativemusicgenius.com. Welcome to Fun with Three Strings. Today I'm creating a little chord jam just using shapes. Two shapes on the guitar fretboard, right? A little help from the uh, magical musical decoder ring, right? And I got Zen Beats and Scalar 2 playing over here for me, right, with my background music. So my two shapes are just this diagonal line and what I call the volleyball shape. I mean, it looks like a volleyball net from the side and a ball going over. I mean, use your imagination. Think of whatever name you like for these particular shapes or just remember where to put your fingers. It makes it super simple to play the guitar, right? So I got, here's the volleyball shape. Diagonal line. Diagonal line. Diagonal line again. All right, so let's take a look at these shapes, right? So the diagonal line, the D, G, and B strings, right? So if I go between the fifth and seventh frets, right, and I just I put my ring finger there in the D string, seventh fret, and then I go back a string. <laughs> Yeah, back a fret and down a string, back a fret and down a string again, right? To just make a simple diagonal line, right? And then I can move that to get a different chord, right? That gives me an A major chord here and a B major chord here, right? So there's one shape and I got two chords out of it. How about that? And then if I take that same shape, and I'm going to use that as a starting point for my volleyball shape, right? I'm going to leave my ring finger there on the 11th fret of the... D string right behind the D right so that gives me a C sharp there right anyways I'm gonna lift up my middle finger and then I'm gonna use my first finger to cover the string that the middle finger was just on right so there's my volleyball shape right and that gives me a C sharp minor right I used my magical musical decoder ring and thought what if I did an E elimination song right I'm gonna use the key of E but I'm not gonna use the chord E, right? I'm gonna use different chords from within that key, right? So I dialed my decoder ring up here to the key of E, where E is one, Roman numeral, right? I'm gonna pick the two chords on the outside, right? A and B, right? And then C sharp minor over here, right? Lowercase Roman numeral means minor, right? And D flat is the same as C sharp, same note, just different name, okay? So those are my three chords, right? And then I decided, you know, let me get out a piece of paper and draw it out, right? So I got A and B happening four times, and that's like one section. See, I wrote it in red. Then I got C sharp minor B happening three times, and then A twice, right? So that's another section of my song. And you could be like verse, chorus, bridge, or however you want to call it. I didn't call it anything. I just made up these little sections, right? Then I got C sharp minor, B, A, B, right? And then, I got my chord progression, I got a layout for a song. Okay. So now, suppose you wanted to play a little lead or make up a melody line over top of this. One way you could do it is you could just take these notes that you're already using, right, for the triads, right? Now I'm gonna add in the B since it's not on here, right? I get the A there and I get the C sharp minor there. But now I got a B right there out of rainbow colors. Now if I take each string one at a time and I go up and down it, So you get the idea, right? You can just go up and down the strings, pick out the notes of the triads that you're playing, right? That's what makes it easy on three strings, right? 
just simple. I don't even have to know the names of the notes or anything about a scale or a mode or any of that or read sheet music. I can just say, okay, these are my notes I get to choose from, right? And of course you can flourish if you want to color outside the lines and try out some other notes that are nearby that sound good to you, you know. Okay, so just play with it and have fun. Get yourself a little chord jam. Write your own chord jam, right? It's simple enough to do. And what, let, me, let me show you over here what we got going on in Zen Beats. Okay, so here we have Zen Beats, right? Now I got three sections. You can see red, blue, and green. And that corresponds to uh, the colors I got here, right? To try to keep it easy on myself. So I just used Zen Beats built-in drum machine, you know, and I played with a few different ones, you know, picked a tempo that I like, right? What did I get there? 93 BPM, right? I picked that for my tempo, and then I picked out a couple of beats that, you know, that I like, right? So I get three different ones up here, right? So that gives me my foundation, and then I used a scalar two which by the way I only use one instance of it inside of Zen Beats. Uh, so I get it turned off right now so it's not going to generate the the, uh, the sounds because I already got it recorded you know so I, but you can see right here I got pattern one right and there's my chord progression A B A B and so on right and I got pattern two it's got the C sharp minor B and down to the A and then pattern three of course C sharp minor B A B down right so what I did then is I hooked up a a synth right with this what have I got in here now beat hawk I like beat hawk because it gives me 16 different instruments I can just choose from and I can pick out my favorite instruments assign each one to a a, a pad so I got I could just pick one, the sound I want right <laughs> and and get it in here Right, so I got like a whole orchestra right there at my disposal. But I also use, you know, like I used the Groove Rider also is in here, uh, which can do the same thing. You, you get 16 different sounds you can, you can load up in here, which, uh, right. So I recorded these, you know, one at a time. I'd set it to, uh, yeah, I'd set it to A and I'd go to the little square here and record it and I get the MIDI right you can see uh, if, again if I can get it open there's the MIDI right that I recorded in here right so once I have it as MIDI I can copy it <laughs> and paste it and put it in other tracks and just use different instruments and the other thing that I can do is if I got an audio track right next to it I can drag it down and it renders it as audio okay well it's not a very high level is it but <laughs> you get the, you can adjust it so you get the idea right so you can make unlimited midi clips you know just keep drag you can record one in and drag it around and put it in other tracks and then i just went to the b part i went to the b part of my sc scalers uh to, you know and I, I messed around with this performance menu right there's different performances in here you know sometimes you got to poke around to find one you really like right but you can pick something of course I did the same thing you can see I've got uh, here's an audio here's an audio clip right that I was all right so you just set up your sections in here with scalar to let that do the work for you or play it in yourself you know I could go ahead and record in here if I wanted to let's take it off loop let's go to the audio okay you can hear my guitar in there I tell you what, I'm gonna go to this one all right the last section the C sharp minor B A B right and I am gonna hit record
course you can use arpeggios, strum, play a lead part, whatever you like. Okay. There it is, of course you can trim it up. I got 13 bars, but I, uh, I think I stopped it too early, but we can trim this down to eight, right? Because my song is in multiples of eight. And Okay, it recorded in the All right, so there it is. Thanks for watching today. Hope you learned something. I would love to hear your creations because I know you are a genius. You're a music genius. Just dive in and play. Check out creativemusicgenius.com. I will uh, let you know on that website how you can get your hands on one of these. I'm thinking about making a PDF printout where you can just like print this out and cut out the circle and, and make your own, right? And this is just magnets. Dial up any key. Jeff Yenser, creativemusicgenius.com. Thanks for watching.